This is literally the set I've been waiting for. We are getting brand new traits that are much different than anything I've ever seen before. We are getting Ramus. Ramus is finally here. I knew that if they made Ramus, it would either be the troll one cost unit or a really powerful, like maybe five cost unit. And so it looks like they are not disappointing us. There is so much to unpack in this reveal. Let's get right into it. I am so excited for this set. I just made a video saying, my hopes for set eight and what would make me want to come back as I am a diamond or master player, but depending on the set, how much time I have, how much I actually enjoy it, it depends how much I play and kind of what rank I really aspire to get to. So with this set, I think that I'm really going to be diving back into this game. There's some familiar uh, traits as they mentioned with Mech and Star Guardian. However, they did say there's a twist to them. So it's not just reprints of an old set Set because TFT players have a very long memory and we don't forget the mechanics from past sets. So here we go. We are going to go right into the augments. I am glad that augments are going to be sticking around indefinitely. I think that it makes the game uh, a little less RNG heavy. I think one of my initial issues with TFT is that it was so RNG heavy and in the first PvE round some people would get six item components, some people would get one, and then there would be no gold to compensate for that. So I think augments and all the other changes they've made have really made this game into way more of a strategy game versus a uh, auto chest that relies heavily on RNG, which I think is great because it actually gives you way more skill expression. I also like that they are going to be introducing augments that are specific to one unit. You know when you do a reroll build and you have that one carry and you try to build around it, but sometimes it still ends up being a little lackluster? I think that they are bringing in a solution to that. So if you have that one hyper carry unit, you can actually augment them to really optimize your build and I think that's going to add a lot of variety into the game. Of course there are going to be some standard uh, you know OP builds that are at the top of the tier list but I think that this brings again more variance more skill expression to the game so that you can actually you know Try some builds and they might be tough to hit all the time so you can't really classify them as S tier but when you do hit them they're super strong so I think it's gonna have to make you be really adaptable to the game and of course the higher elo you get the more that these things mean because in lower elo you can pick a pretty good comp and if you just have the base mechanics of the game down pat you will likely place in the top four. I also really like that the example they gave with Alistar uh, with his augment that he has a single target knockup, but then you can make it AOE. I found in Dragonlands there were a lot of builds that just didn't have any CC, and unless you like really just picked units that had CC and kind of ruined your build just for the sake of having CC, it it kind of felt bad whereas this you can actually build around that if you have a good build but you just need a little bit more crowd control, here we have it. So I also like that they're making a point to not have three rounds of augments where you can just buff one unit because I just think that would be really really hard for them to balance around and I think that it doesn't offer a lot of counterplay if somebody has the three perfect augments for their hero. I just feel like that's a... it's setting you up for basically the six dragons build that I absolutely despised in set 7.5. So now, one of the biggest points that I had made in that last video is that I hated the two space units. I am so happy that they are going to be removing that from the game, at least for now. If it comes back, whatever, but I just enjoy the one space units and I feel like I can get way more creative with my builds. As we know from Dragonlands, if you didn't use like a couple dragons, you were most likely not getting in the top four. Of course, there were a couple builds that didn't use dragons, but I just found that you had to make space for those units, and I just, you know, I'm annoyed. Or I was annoyed. Now I'm so happy with this change. So now we get to see more, just have a little bit of an issue with Ramus coming to the game. I am really excited. I just think it's been such a meme for such a long time that I hope that this unit doesn't disappoint. Based on the aesthetic of Ramus and uh, 
the the look of his ability so far i think it's gonna be really fun to play also just a note on the aesthetics of this game i really like that they have a bunch of the traits that are really dark looking and then some that are light so i think there's going to be that hero villain dynamic which they talked about in the video and i think that's going to be really cool some of the really awesome skin lines are making an appearance in this set and i'm really excited i think the anima squad already looks super fun and super satisfying to play again i just really think they've nailed down uh, what they want this game to be, what kind of aesthetics they're after, what kind of gameplay, and I really do, I've always felt that this TFT team is really innovative and really works hard to make the game better and better every set. Yes, they do miss sometimes, but that is with any game, and I just feel lucky that they actually put the time into trying new things and seeing what works, seeing what doesn't, because that is literally how you improve a game. So I was wondering if they were going to keep the treasure dragon mechanic because I really did enjoy that about 7.5. But it looks like from this underground trait that they're going to have kind of a treasure dragon mercenary type of uh, trait that you can, you know, keep going and risk it all. So I, I think that's going to be really fun. One thing I also do want to note that it looks like they are going to have a couple of different ways to do econ traits and that is really important because I found that in the past there was either the mercenaries where you had to go on this huge loss streak and then hope to cash out or you had to do like a reroll comp and then just kind of sell those extra units. Now I feel like there's a bunch more econ options and because econ is so important to the game, it kind of feels good that you have a couple different choices. It also looks like they have some customizable uh, units and traits that do shift not only game to game, but round to round. And again, I am all about that because I think that there is a lot of skill expression. You can ignore those traits and not play them and then you don't have to learn them but you still have to learn a little bit of how to play against them and you know what's the counter to them or not but again i just i think the more variance you have in this type of game the less that you're going to be relying on you know rng which sometimes feels fun sometimes feels really bad Overall, I am very excited for this set. As we get more information, I think it's going to confirm how good of a set it's going to be. I think that when it hits PvE and they can do some testing, they'll make the tweaks necessary. And again, this is a very hardworking team that works on teamfight tactics. So I just know that I trust the direction and that it's going to be a good set. I mean, I am a Star Guardian enjoyer, so I just know any set that includes Star Guardian, they're gonna go all out for. I'm not gonna go over the cosmetics. I might go over that in a different video, but I just am gonna skip ahead to where TFT is going. I love that they give us a roadmap because it shows that they are thinking ahead. And as this set rolls out and they see what works and what doesn't, it will probably affect the future set. So I think that's great. Uh, so we actually don't have very many patches left until the new set comes out. So if you're climbing the ranks, uh, make sure to get your last games in. Patch 12.23, which will be in about a month, is going to launch. And then we are into a new set. And then we can see here that the roadmap, uh, basically in the spring, there's gonna be a new mid set. In summer 2023, that's when the next set is gonna launch, which makes sense because it's about every year where we're getting two different sets. Um, and then if you look ahead to winter 2023, it says that it's going to be the most innovative set yet. So I think there's a lot more to come and I cannot wait. So let me know in the comments what you're most excited about for this set. Stay tuned for more uh, content releases, speculations, and eventually guides once the builds start rolling out.